Aloha Flow Riders. So. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't feel like an aloha day because you have a windstorm and we have thunderstorm. It does not feel like sunny Yo, or Hawaiian today. <laughs> it's I, dark I woke and gloomy. up this morning at like 4 a.m. Well, it was like 4 24 because this old guy who can't tell time zones decides to text me a picture of Adrian's face at four o'clock. And then he's like, oh, that was for Val. I'm like, Paul, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and, then, and then I couldn't go back to sleep because the wind is slapping the building so hard. We're getting not quite hurricane. Um, oh. you know, cause There's no rain or whatever, but the wind is between 25 and 50. So oh there's a goodness. storm that's not touching the island, but it's causing like all of this crazy wind. And yeah, it's pretty funny because you can just see the palm trees are bent. Like they're doing that thing. When you know when something be on sale and they have the <laughs> <laughs> the wild wacky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that air thing. Yeah. Sorry, people. I'm cleaning my glasses first and then we're gonna do this flow because I can't see nothing. I'm like looking at a blurry Katie. It's all um, good. So our disclaimer today is that if something goes horribly wrong, uh, we'll record it and we'll get back to you another yo. day. Yo. <laughs> you know what was so good is yesterday, like the internet did not want to be nice to um mm. to Anna. And what it was was just like YouTube decided in the beginning not to give her her comments feed. And then Aww. later on it came in. But she handled it, but it was just super funny because she's handling it while she's talking about not being able to handle it. And it's kind of like you're laughing. And it made me remind me of when I was a little kid, my little sister was like, well, we not we can't go to the pool because you can't swim. And that's irritating. And so you're going to learn how to swim. And I was like really little. I was like four. And I'm like, but I can't swim. And my sister goes, yeah, no, you can't. So she just threw me into the pool. And, you know, I'm over here like, listen, you got to get me out of here because I can't swim. You know, the whole time I'm just sitting there for like 10 minutes arguing with her. But your body won't let you drown, like, unless you just stop. If you panic and stop, you will drown. But if you just keep going, you'll you'll be up. You just don't realize how you're doing it. So I was in the pool just completely naturally wading water, talking about I can't swim, like, please come and get me. And then she just stood there on the side and just watched me. And she was like, if you went under, I would have grabbed you, but you just stood there and kept going. <laughs> and that, that's what Autumn reminded me of yesterday, because while she was saying that, she was perfectly fine. <laughs> like, nobody really knew except her, and she kept saying it. So it was funny. Uh, so that's going to be us today. That's going to be us today. Well, yeah. before we jump into today's episode, which we're doing entirely for George, who wants to know much more about YouTube. So we're covering, we're covering YouTube. We're going back to the beginning, which is perfect because today is exactly one year from our first episode. So happy birthday, Flow Riders. Ooh. We are here one year of the flow. And because one year of the flow and because we love a duck race, we are going to do a duck race giveaway <laughs> bonanza at the end of this episode. So you have to stick around until the Q&A. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Get a bunch of good information. Uh, and then you could win some fun stuff. So yeah, definitely stick around until the very end. And all we want for our birthday is uh, five stars and reviews from you and all your friends. So <laughs> swing on over go. and leave those for us or share this episode um, with someone else so that they get the information as well. But yeah, thank you for hanging out with us for this whole year. Crazy. That's crazy. You know what's really funny about that is George says you want to know more about YouTube. And so, well, that's one of the things you do at YouTube. Drop the hook in the beginning and make them stay. <laughs> so <laughs> you did it. I I put on my I put on my LinkedIn and my Facebook before the episode. I was kind of just reflecting back over the year, and I'm like, you know what? It's so funny. I, in many ways, we started the show so that I could learn more about podcasting. So you're all on this journey with me. I'm asking all of the questions and learning. So if you've been coming along with me, you know these are all the things that I did not know when we started that now I feel pretty confident about. So um, well, here's what's yeah. really good about that is like everybody. I don't know whether you well, you know what? I'll save this for the for the talk never mind we'll, we'll, we'll do <laughs> all right we're, Actually, we're ready we're ready we're ready to jump in and thank you to everyone i see all your comments yes i had a fantastic vacation i'm very tanned i'm, I'm feeling chatty other than the fact that it's like a oh. hurricane outside i'm doing well <laughs> you see you see all right listen this is why me and these family people are gonna have to fight i came back from vacation ain't nobody said nothing all right cool i'm out peace out <laughs> Yeah. Doc, you live you live in vacation land, so it's like it's less exciting. <laughs> oh, too funny. Uh, all right, let's roll. We're gonna um do a little I gotta finish this tea here and then we'll go.
<laughs> well, here, while you're doing that, I'm going to hold up my, my normal mug and the Dan mug. So, you know, just so you can see really the difference in size here. I'm still rocking the normal one today, but maybe I might move to, to Dan size. That is just psycho. <laughs> that is psycho. It's going to be really funny watching you drink out of that next to um, Ken and the little Ekan Demi Toss. <laughs> oh, too funny. All right. All right, here we go. Let's breathe it out. <sighs> Counting it down in five, four. Aloha, Flow Riders, and welcome to another edition of The Flow. Actually, welcome to our Bon Anniversary edition of The Flow. Did I say that right? Is that, You're close. That You're close. Like, well, how do you say it? I don't like being close. I like being right. Bon Anniversary. Oh, bon anniversaire. You got to say there it with go, that, proper, that proper yeah. Quebecian, French, Canadian. Yeah, and I'm sure someone I'm sure someone on the chat is like, nah, Katie, that's not it. <laughs> Wait, but you can do it. You're, you're Canadian. You, you have it built in. That's I'm in true. Hawaii. I'm not Thank French you. Canadian, though, so I still definitely can screw up the French. Yeah, so it's uh, Montreal and Toronto. That's all I know. <laughs> you got to say Toronto like that. Yeah, that's what I sure heard do. from my friend. You sure do. <laughs> anyway, it is our it is our one year anniversary, our birthday or whatever. We have done this show flow for a year. This is episode fifty. Um, one. Which, 51. Ooh, 51. Sorry. That's right. I, I, that's right. Because <laughs> I I remember I remember because I just was waiting for Luis and Luis was making fun of me for last week. <laughs> <laughs> Louis yeah. said that um, Frederick and I took too long with the episodes. So he was going to take longer to edit it, but we went way over because it's me and Frederick. It just—it happened. was so fun to. I I watched it this morning <laughs> as I was um, editing and grabbing the transcript, and it was such a fun episode. Frederick, you are such a joy. <laughs> right? Such a joy Isn't watch, Frederick yeah. awesome? And yeah. I was like, well, Kenny's used to this. She's seen us do this live for like a week mm -hmm. solid, so <laughs> it was kind of fun. It was really, really great. But yeah, so with this which is really amazing to me and it's actually better that it's 51 because we skipped one episode we basically covered an entire year and we only yeah. skipped one episode and that technically was the fourth of july episode i believe so i believe so <laughs> take, so, me, take me all the way back to last month and i'm like nah i don't, I don't remember <laughs> oh yeah, dude last month what the heck was that you know so like imagine that folks like we one of the things we talk about when we were talking about starting a podcast or whatever and even in the very beginning when we were going through this we mentioned this whole consistency thing and we're like we'll just do this and see where it goes and then you know maybe we'll end up with a 10 episode podcast like heater that we can show to people when they ask about ecam and podcasting and we kind of overshot <laughs> i'm just saying right you know we're like your dad we keep showing up wall. so we keep we keep yeah, doing we it keep doing this right it was like the griswolds you know and not asking for directions we're just going to figure this out so here we are on our vacation uh 51 shows later and congratulations, congratulations but i wanted to, i wanted to point something out because everyone in the entire family sees this and i don't know like if you get enough flowers for it but everybody says oh my god like it's really fun to watch you now compared to you when you first started because the level of growth is like phenomenal right i just, I just thank you and i just um i just grabbed my first ever i think it was my first ever live stream so my first interview was um back when I first started, we did this meet the pros series. And what's even funnier about it, I've told the story on a bunch of different shows, but what's funny about it is that, so I, I joined to do this series, I joined the company to do this series. And yet there's like three, I think, or four episodes before mine of just Ken, Glenn and Midori being like way too nice to me and being like, I'll host, I'll host next week. Cause I was just like, um, I'm good. You guys, you guys can host. I don't want, I don't want to host. I was so scared. I was so scared of the idea of being on camera. I don't even really even know why. Um, but I, yeah, I was absolutely you hear terrified. Me say this, right. Yeah. You hear me say this all the time. I think people say that because they heard other people say that and yeah. they feel that it's a valuable excuse and mm -hmm. not even from an excuse standpoint, but I think 
there's a bunch of things that we all say and do that I know from a psychological standpoint aren't real, but enough people say them that enough people think it's a thing. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's, it's funny because we had a little bit of this conversation yesterday and I just wanted to explain to people that there is exactly 110% something is being, you know, overexhausted, overexerted, or burnt out from just trying to do too much things. But there is absolutely unequivocally no such thing as creator burnout. You can't just add an extra word to a DSM-5 thing and then make it a thing so that people who create can have an excuse not to create. I'm like, sorry, I'm not going to let you have that. And And I think that camera shyness and stage fright are two things that people say that everyone adopts because it's the easiest way out but no one's really that way because if you ever watch people that karaoke in the beginning the party sucks you got to have a ringer to kick it off and then a couple of slits is in later everybody be like we are the world we are the little bitty african children we are the ones to make the better but get off the stage mike please get off the stage don't tell mike to <laughs> like it's really funny but everyone is like this so i think it's just something that people say that it's just they copy each other and it's not real and there's a bunch of you know like old school sicknesses remember the the old uh moms used to tell you that you were going to get this if you did that right like if you eat a watermelon seed you're going to grow watermelons in your stomach Yep. Impossible. <laughs> but people believe that for a hot minute, right? It's camera is like that. Anyway, so let's get into our stuff. Um, you, you know what I'm saying? No, Rich, um, listen, stage fright is exists because people made it exist, but no one was born afraid of stages because stages are new. So how do we get all the way through this, you know, grown folks life and all of a sudden somewhere in the Victorian era, somebody invented stage fright like it's it's not if it's not in the dsm-5 it's not real it's it's a socially accepted or socially created thing that's what i'm trying to say all right Mm. yeah (laughs) onward to youtube (laughs) onward to youtube so today i thought it would be fun our first ever episode was was all about podcasting on youtube and i know that george had a question specifically about you know kind of how to how to start creating video on youtube so i thought we would just dive a little bit deep about um about how to yeah how to get started on youtube how to start a podcast on youtube and how to for maybe for the second half we can talk a little bit about how to move a podcast over to youtube or pick a podcast up onto youtube if you don't want to fully move it over so no matter where you're at in this in this journey we can talk a little bit about why why you want to be here on this platform and what the value is so we should start i guess by saying that a year ago, one of the one of the kicking off points of this podcast was that Doc had been saying for a while, YouTube is going to get into podcasting. YouTube is going to start being in this podcasting space. You know, YouTube has been talking about it for a bit. They they are going to pull the trigger on this, and we should be there. We you know we are a company that makes a video production software, a live streaming software. It makes sense for us to be talking about podcasting on a platform that is built for video, that is focusing in on podcasting, and it wasn't. I don't know. I can't remember the exact timeline, Doc, but I think it was like a month or so after you had said that and we had started up with this show that that YouTube was like, podcasting is here. <laughs> yeah. Big announcement. Surprise, surprise. So, you know, since then, we've been on this this trip of, of telling everyone that we can of the value of YouTube as a podcasting platform and of the you know workflow that we've been using here on the flow and why it's important. So I, I think what I would say maybe to start is that it, certainly it's valuable. It's valuable for all of the obvious reasons, like the size and scope of YouTube, the potential audience, the fact that video is, you know, probably the most complicated, quote unquote, uh, you know, part of this process. So if you start with it, it everything is kind of downhill and easier from there. Um, but I, I think really too, it's if you can figure out how to do this from a podcasting standpoint, then it's much, much easier for everything else as well. So like you can build and grow an entire YouTube channel with a podcast. You can have your podcast as part of a larger YouTube strategy that includes, you know, recorded and live videos. Um, there's a lot of different options for you. So, you know, I think it's, it is an easy starting place because podcasting is, 
you know, con- thinking about it from a show perspective just makes it a little bit more contained and it makes it easier to figure out like, you know, what you're going to name your channel, what, you know, what the the cadence and the, the schedule is for posting, all of that kind of stuff is, I think, a little bit easier for people to approach from a show perspective versus like, I want to start a YouTube channel like that. That is, I think, a little bit harder to wrap your head around. So, well, I think here's this is true. And here's what it is, right? I think a lot of people think that starting a YouTube channel is what the personality channels create. But there's a bunch of channels, channels you watch all the time that are nowhere near personality channels. For -hmm. instance, there might be that your local news provider, uh, you know, your six, your sevens, your fives, your eights, your elevens, whatever they are, have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. All they do is legit pull clips out of the six o'clock news and put it on there every single day. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? That's it. That's it. So a channel can be whatever you want it to be. And personality channels are actually the hardest thing you could probably do on, on YouTube, making a channel where you are edutaining someone or educating someone or just providing a, an escape, for them for whatever that they do uh there's people who legit just sit in their shop and they lathe a bowl never speak a word they chuck it up i know because i watch this mess (laughs) they chuck up a a block of wood you know tighten it in the lathe grab a handle and they do that for 20 minutes solid never say anything at the end they got a bowl or a plate or a lamp candlestick whatever mr mustard and they take it off and that's it. The next week there's another one. They don't say anything. So a channel could be anything. So let's let's not overcomplicate YouTube. YouTube itself is actually easy. What most people are doing is trying to overcomplicate it because they think that you have to be Mr. Beast and you do not. And and no yeah. most you can't be Jimmy. Jimmy is barely having a hard enough time being Jimmy. He don't need another person to copy him. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a really, really fair point is that a lot of us just, yeah, we, we're thinking about it as being much more of a huge thing and, a, and an irreversible thing than it actually is. <laughs> like setting up a YouTube channel takes maybe 15 minutes and you can start doing it without having all of the stuff ready, without having all of the plan ready. And if you make one and then you decide that you want to you know, you hate it, you want to delete it, you can delete it, you, you know, you decide that you want to go in a different direction, you can change things about it, you can, you know, there's a ton of, a ton of flexibility and potential. And I I would say, start, as we've been saying all the way through this show, just start, just start and fill out as many of the fields as you possibly can. And when you hit a wall, save and then go back to, you know, wherever you stopped because you needed X, Y, Z extra thing that you had to get and go back and continue filling it all out. But the the most effective way to do it is really just to, to take a look at what YouTube is asking you to input and make sure that you have all of those things as complete as possible inputted. Because that that is really, I think, where a lot of people end up falling short is that they're like, you know, they don't, they don't put in about us. You know, they don't take advantage of like the you know, custom naming conventions, or they don't read what all of the different inputs are that YouTube is asking you for. And the more information you give YouTube, it's a search engine, the better you are going to, the better chance you have of, you know, being able to grow and reach your audience and, and become a really effective channel. So, you know, your first step is, is just to start, start filling it out. You know, you need, you will need, I guess the basics of what you'll need is, you know, a name, (laughs) some sort of name and some sort of, you know, content idea, I guess. But I, I mean, it took me, I probably 15 or 20 minutes when I started the VHS club podcast to, I created a logo, logo, <laughs> quote unquote logo in Canva in, you know, I, I went through kind of general styles and ideas that I wanted. I, and with that and the name, it was 15 minutes until I had a, a YouTube channel and I filled out every single field and I, you know, I've gone back and edited a lot of that and changed it and grown it and added, you know, all the stuff in as I've gotten better at this and have done more of this, but it started with just filling out all of the inputs on the channel page so that we had everything that YouTube was looking for to get started. 
There you go. And, you know, a lot of it has to do with just understanding that this is actually, in the end, easier than doing an audio-only podcast. Mm. And Mm -hmm. back in the day, this wasn't true, which is one of the reasons why it's become so much more uh, of an argument. It wouldn't be an argument right now if we started here. But in the past, you could get a podcast placed on, you know, an audio channel. You just record the audio, you throw it up, give the feed the lips in, and you were good to go. Before YouTube, you had to store your videos on a, like a WordPress site and then connect that up as the media to the RSS feed. And that could get out of space real quick because back in the day, you know, for 50 bucks a month, you got one gig of storage for your website, like one whole gig, you know, and that was considered incredible, you know, and for the, for the, you know, beginning of doing podcasts when video started to gain a little traction, which is around, I want to say 2009, it was more like 07 with Kevin Rose and Leo Laporte, but it really started to gain traction for other people around 2009. And that was because the initial Apple TV came out. And when the Apple TV came out and the iPod that has a little screen on it that can actually play videos, which I have in the drawer right here. Um, <laughs> the, it, they came out and Apple added a video oriented RSS connection to Apple Podcasts so at that time, iTunes. And so then people started doing it. I know that I started doing it back then. Uh, Leo, Kevin, like all of our old school tech crew, that's when we started. But you, at that time too, to just record something with a camera and capture it into a computer required a bunch of the steps, right? And, um, you know, we had the Bondi blue bubbly iMac that could <laughs> use a firewire cable, but that was too time consuming, right? So we were looking for what was known as like, um, like sort of higher end capture cards, right? So at that point, we were trying to get 720 video into a computer that we could edit and then boom get it to the business and go. So it was it was just a pain in the butt. You know what I mean? And then it became easier. And so YouTube made it so that you could throw a video and store it and not pay an arm and a leg. And so everybody kept saying, YouTube needs to do podcasts. And they were focused on their own swag for the longest time. But once they turn the faucet on, it's on like Donkey Kong. So starting a YouTube channel, simple, always has been. A podcast is just a playlist on YouTube. That is it. So it's not complicated. Don't overthink it. Don't be like, I need to do a podcast on YouTube. If you take any playlist on YouTube that is of any substance and check the box that say it's a podcast, it's a podcast. (laughs) And if you're not there yet, so like, you know, if you're, if you're doing this from scratch and you're starting a new YouTube channel, like Doc says, you know, fill out all of the information. And then as you start either uploading or live streaming your first videos, start creating playlists, start, you know, start creating. So for example, the, the VHS club podcast, I have a different playlist for each different like era of videos that were of movies that we're reviewing. Right. So that's like one playlist is eighties movies, one's nineties movies, et cetera. Right. So it's really easy. And then I have one that's shorts, but the more that you label and the more information that you're giving to YouTube, again, the, the more that they're able to take in and show you all the different, you know, show your podcast and your show to all the different people that need or want to see it. So again, create all of those. I'm not at the point yet where I have a large enough audience that I've unlocked YouTube podcasts. So my mind is not an official YouTube podcast yet. But you better believe that every single description that I'm putting in, whether that's in the playlist description or in the actual episode descriptions, I have, you know, the word podcast. I have podcast as a hashtag. I am constantly through both the video content and the titles and descriptions and keywords, letting YouTube know what my episodes are about, that it is a podcast, that it is a show. You know, I'm I'm defining and categorizing using their tools so that it's really easy to be able to get picked up by that player. So, and this is relevant information again, George, you know, who is newer and hasn't kind of fully gotten into the world of YouTube yet. It, 
really, again, a lot, a lot of this is really relevant, whether you're doing a podcast or a live show, or you're just starting a YouTube channel to be able to upload recorded videos. It's, it's really just, you know, self-defining, filling out the fields and making, going back and making any edits. If there's something that got, you know, changed or added, or, you know, you decided that you wanted to take it in a different way, go back and, you know, and make those edits and, and make those changes. That's fine. You can always do that. And all of that extra information is just helping your content become more and more visible. And as features, and the more you do it, the more features will get unlocked. So, you know, on the Ecamm yeah. channel, we're always seeing features getting unlocked, right? Trailers got unlocked for us, the ability to, um, to uh, what's it called where the video connects to like the next video like the live video goes redirects into the next redirects. video all of those are features that youtube allows users to have as they grow their pages so the bigger your you know the more following and presence you have the more feature the bigger your feature set gets so keeping an eye out on those as you're logging into youtube on a regular basis is also going to be great you know oh now i have access Whoa. to this thing i can unlock and use that now one thing to remember, right? I, I, I sort of appreciate what you said. Okay, the reason why you do everything the right way and all the way through the right way, because some things have a threshold and the threshold is high because YouTube's either testing or they want to make sure that it's fully baked before they release, release it, right? So mm -hmm. every day we get we get emails as to, um, well, how come I can't do this? Because, well, I don't have 4,000 channels. That seems unfair. Unfair to who? right it's youtube server so you can roll your own you can roll your own right now tomorrow that says you don't have to have any but the reason why you want to use youtube is because it's the biggest thing in the platform right you can start a clothing store in your yard it's not going to be the same thing as doing at a westerfield or golden you know golden gates mall or something right you're doing it in your yard it's totally up to you you could do it the reason why you want to be at the mall is because that's where the bodies are so the reason why you're making your videos and putting them on youtube is because that's where the bodies are youtube also has a right to say i'm not going to put the corn dog stand at the end cap where sears goes because the corn dog stand cannot generate a hot dog and a stick that's what it's called you can't you can't generate the same traffic that a sears can generate or a jc pennies or now whatever the anchor stores because both of them are half gone yeah so the reason why they have these numbers and these thresholds and things is because they have to make sure that you're coming there you're being performative you're not a robot you're you know a real deal person once they get their resources in a row and they understand how it's going to work and they've ironed out what they think are all the problems, they normally reduce those stands, right? So some of the things that used to require 4,000 subs has moved down to 1,000. Some things have gone all the way down to 500. So you do it the correct way because any given day, YouTube will come in and be like, ah, change my mind. You only need 500 and then boom, now it's turned on for you. So it's almost like putting in reps as a as a backup quarterback or a understudy in a play. You got to know all the lines. You got to do everything just like someone else, because that day that Valerie goes, <clears throat> oh, she can't sing. They're gonna be like, Katie, you got to stand in for Valerie, and then you you got to go over there. What like through <laughs> yard window breaks? It is the east, right? I mean, that's what it is. So you have to do the right things, people. You can't say I'm a half ass it because I'm not all the way there yet because YouTube will just ignore you. You're not doing the right thing anyway. And it, there is no fair, unless you own YouTube, you are stuck with the numbers that they give you. You don't get to be oh, that's not fair. And sorry, getting frustrated over such things. <laughs> I, I it's mean, not fair that the app store don't let you do something. Well, make your own app store and watch what happens. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, I, the benefit of this platform is its reach and the fact that it is free. It is free and immediate to get up and running and started. So this is easier than setting up a website. This is easier than, you know, a ton of other different options. So yeah, take advantage of it. But I, you know, again, like when I say to fill out all of the fields, like there are things that you might want to work your way up towards. So like when I set up a channel, I fill out all the fields as completely as I can, right? But then as the show is growing and getting, you know, bigger and, and starting to develop, you know, different features or, you know, cool things that I've decided to add into it, I can go back and add those into my YouTube channel. So, you know, or I can go back and decide that like, oh, you know, well, I, you know, I think it would be actually really helpful to add in chapters so, so that people can click to exactly where they want in the video, right? So things like that, you can go back and add those in afterwards, the video can be up kind of gaining momentum before you go back and add that in, that's fine. 
you know, or you can build that into your process. I think what you said in, in last week's episode, I, I saved as like a quotable that we should share over and over again, but it's, you know, this idea of trying to keep as consistent as possible. And the way to do that is to create an easily repeatable process, right? So whatever right. that initial easily repeatable process is, do that. And then if you, you know, once you're in a really a good comfort phase and you've been doing that for a bit, then add on the next thing, right? So for us, it was, let's just get up and running. We know that we're going to do this show every single, you know, Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. We're going to do it live. And, you know, and once we had done that for a little bit, then it was, okay, you know, now we're going to, um, we're going to take the transcript and add that in as, as subtitles to each episode when we upload it. Okay. Now we're going to add in chapters so that people can easily find their way through the content. Okay. Now we're going to, you know, add in clips that we're going to share across social, you know, social media sites so that people can discover additional information. So it, you know, all of those things are things that we were building on to an, an repeatable process, something that was really consistent for us. And that's how you're going to continue to show up on a platform like YouTube. And that's how you're going to continue to be able to unlock some of those additional features that will help you show up to more people, right? So it it's kind of a self-replicating process of the more you show up, the more you show up to more people, right? I think also Andy brings up a good point. Like you don't need to start with everything. You just need to start. And I think, again, I don't know where we got this thing from. Like everything has to be sort of perfect, you know, in order to start. Like, I really don't know where people started with that. And it kind of needs to stop <laughs> because so many good things right now are sitting on a table somewhere in idea form that someone needs to just bring to the table, but they haven't because they're wanting it to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I mean, like, if you th I, I like to think of it like, you know, either Star Wars or the MCU. Uh, MCU started with what, Iron Man? And then later we got to Captain America, which goes backward. And then way, way later we got to Car Captain Marvel, which is number three. But I mean, here we are 23 movies later, they started in the middle and like, oh snap, we got to go back and then we got to go back and then we got to go, oh, now we got to go forward and mm -hmm. we're breaking off. So like, but we wouldn't have MCU if we never let out Iron Man, mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? And it has to come out or same with Star Wars. We wouldn't have all the rest of the Star Wars empire if it wasn't for 77. 77 had to come out for there to end up being this total dominance of something that we never we thought oh man our kids never gonna understand star wars we were lucky we were around in the beginning and then all of a sudden <laughs> it just blew up and we're like oh hey welcome back fam all right now now we have something that you can connect with people that you know you can talk to them about um i was thinking about you when you were on vacation because we started emma on jurassic parks and we watched <laughs> the the i'm sorry not jurassic parks indiana jones we watched the first one the other oh, day nice. and now yeah. we're in a rabbit hole <laughs> and so now i had to go back and rewatch <laughs> all of the indiana jones again like everything had to start yeah. somewhere and in order for you to get going on this just do it just do it and we'll we'll perfect it over the time but we all know that there's technically no such thing as perfect yeah yeah i i mean i think like anything else in this it it comes down to starting and then creating a system so that it's repeatable and then you can iterate on that system whatever that looks like for you uh, but yeah everything the cool thing i think the coolest part about youtube honestly is that it's all editable you so you can go back later and you can say like oh actually i don't like any of our thumbnails and you can you could spend the time and go back and change them all or you know hey the description that i have here is no longer relevant because i you know i built out a completely new website you can go back and add all that in um there's places to add you know information about music there's places to add you know links so that they appear as cards in your video there are places to to connect everything together it really creates this like you know, we, we talk about the internet as this as this web, right? YouTube is great at that, great at creating this entire web as you input all of that data, but you can go back and change any of those things. You can say like, connect this playlist with this playlist, you know, turn this playlist into a podcast and keep this one as, you know, as a regular uh, playlist. You you are giving them the information of what you want them to do with, uh, with it, you know? So it, I think it's just got a lot of potential as far as that goes, but you're right. You can't do any of it if you don't start with some kind of information but just don't 
panic. <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide. <laughs> don't, don't panic. Don't Grab panic. your towel. Don't panic. Uh, and put some start. You know, put some initial information in and and go from there. But it uh, it's a really nice, like we said at the beginning, it's a really nice way to start with a podcast because it is the in many ways the hardest part and the part that people have a hard time wrapping their head around is you know how can i start with video how can i do it with video if you start with video and you start on a platform like youtube the rest of it is pretty easy downhill from there so <laughs> if you've you've checked the video box and everything else is easy to grab from that place you can pull the audio out you can send it across you can pull the transcript to make a blog post you can build a website when like you, you can do all of that once you've started and it's free and pretty easy to start with. So here, here's, here's, let's, let's wrap this back up again. I mean, back this back up again. Listen, here's how I can tell you in a matter of steps. I can't even tell you what the number is because I can just do it out of the top of my head, but here are the steps to start a YouTube podcast. Go to uh, Google, sign in, create a YouTube channel. It's going to give you a bunch of holes to fill out that you have to fill out. Just fill them out. And then once you're done, okay, stop doing that. Then take this phone, stack it on a stack of books, put the camera on and say whatever you have to say about beanie, ba beanie babies for, you know, the next five minutes. Okay. Once you're done with that file, don't do anything with it. Just upload it to YouTube into that segment. Repeat that a couple of times a month until you have 10 and now it's a playlist and now it's a podcast. Then you say, hey, people are starting to like this. Cool. Go get a camera. All right, let's pick, I don't know, Insta 360 Link or Ozbot Tiny or whatever. Now you just got a better camera. Now you're doing it better. Now you're starting to put things in your background that look like Beanie Babies and whatever. Okay, that's cool. Let's go get a Sony. Bam, now I got a Sony and a microphone and more Beanie Babies. And I'm inviting in a guest and I'm using <laughs> And now I'm going to actually edit these episodes and I'm actually going to put thought and thumbnails. I mean, like everyone's looking for some magic box. There is none. The only look grandma said ain't nothing to it, but to do it. Actually it was uh, Maya Angelou, but <laughs> there ain't nothing to it, but to do it. The only way to yeah. get to what you think is polished that all of the episodes and the people that are doing what they're doing is polished is by doing it. And one of my favorites Way back when I first got hired at Ecamm, I found out that Katie and I were both listening to True Crime podcast. Like, I went into it kicking and screaming, and I ended up liking it. But I won't tell that. Anyway, um, <laughs> there was these two girls out of Boston. Their podcast is called Morbid. And they were hot trash, but there was something about them that was funny and entertaining. <laughs> And so I send it to Katie. I'm like, check these guys out. They're not audio Chuck yet, which is um, Ashley and what's her face? What's crime that thing junkies, called? Crime Junkies, yeah. Crime Junkies. There we go. That's crime the word junkies, I was looking yeah. for. Um, they weren't Crime Junkies yet. They weren't serial. But they were cute that they were just starting out and, like, you know, basically sitting in their house on pillows in the couch and just saying whatever came to their mind. And it was, it was raw trash, but it was fun to listen to anyway because it was entertaining to yeah. see the scrappy kids trying to get to that level. They are freaking massive now. And I think they probably mm -hmm. grew faster than junkies. Why? Because people could relate to two homies sitting on the couch puffing a spliff and talking about their case. Like yeah. I understood that more than a, hi, this is Ashley from crime junkies. I'm recording this podcast with a studio and a production team of 50. Uh, yeah. You know, they just, you couldn't get that, but you could totally get two friends sitting around, you know, drinking, having a blast and talking about something that they watched on oxygen, you know, and that's more relatable. So fam, just, start like really just start i i one of our people in our circle is like i'm going to launch on this day because i need to do this 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 and this and i'm like no you don't you need to just launch now and then get better because <laughs> like you're missing the opportunity to get better and you're going to try to launch what you think is perfect and you're going to find the hiccups live because that's when you find them and then you're going to back mm -hmm. off but if you start with ain't nobody watching you can make all of the mistakes when ain't nobody watching and then by the time <laughs> you know, you get to the point where people are watching, you, you're good. Nobody even knows about Fulgens and Anna playing that first Ecamm video I made the other day. Damn it, Fulgens. <laughs> like, that was, to me, it's trash. It's, Everybody it's else is laughing. They think it's funny. <laughs>
Yeah. Well, what's, and what's cool about it is that it becomes easier and easier to replicate, right? So again, I, I, we do it as a live format, so you don't need to, it is easier. I'll tell you, even though it doesn't feel like it, it really is. But now it's, it's literally, so we have our, you know, our templated thumbnail, it's in Canva, it's a template. I just click duplicate. I change the title of it. It's, you know, and then it goes, then I take that, I go over into YouTube. I click that I'm going to schedule a go live. It comes up and it says, do you want to duplicate one of your former lives? I say yes. And I select last week's flow episode. And then I just change the title and I change the beginning of the description. But all of the rest of it is all a template. All of the settings are the same. I filled them out once and I'm duplicating it every single time. So, and then it's scheduled and it's up there and I can share it and promote it. And, you know, and be, it's part of the, the overall kind of podcasting experience, but but I only really had to do all of the like upfront work initially. And then everything else is just part of a template and a process. And I can, we could change the template at any point. We could decide we want a different description or we want a different logo. We want, and that's fine. We can go back and do that at any point. As I said, we've done things like go back and add, you know, chapters or we've linked videos together or we've added additional resources or built out show notes. All of that we can go back in later and do. But the really, the process is it's all templatized. templatized. It's all just, you know, repeating the same thing over and over again, which makes it really fast and really easy. I don't have to think about it. So it, if you can get into that habit, and again, like Doc said, you, you can start with whatever, but you can get into that habit. Once you have a few of them uploaded, duplicate them. It's just, it's the same, yeah. it's the same yeah. you know, basic format for your description. It's the same basic, for, whatever that is. Like it could be your title every week could be like, you know, the, the flow episode one, you know, hyphen this, you know, this name of it, the flow episode two hyphen this, like, that's okay. And then later go back and see if there's a punchier, you know, title that you want to add later, but you might be fine with, with that. Like it's, it's really needs to just be as easy as, as whatever you can replicate, you know, week after week or month after month, whatever your, your cadence is for how often you're going to release an episode. His was cool. I had a buddy of mine named Sam back in the day and he used to do a three minute podcast and they were epic and it was because yeah. he didn't take it seriously he was kind of joking because all of the podcasts back then were basically in the very beginning all the podcast was trying to replicate radio and tv right they were trying yeah. so hard but the equipment was out of reach whatever it was super out of reach so sam had this crazy idea He's just going to come up every day with an app. He's just going to pick a random app out of the iPhone <laughs> store um, because at that time the uh, app store was brand new and he would just talk for two to three minutes about any random app that he found in the, in the uh, app store. He ended up being one of the number one podcasts <laughs> <laughs> for a while yeah. and he stopped doing it but like he got invited to every show every uh mac world or ces or whatever be you know come some app company would pay for him to come to florida and help you know rep their app but it was literally simple and he did it starting out as a joke like 100 as a joke but you'd be surprised at what people relate to so if you're thinking oh i gotta go do an hour every week i don't have that don't do an hour like you know, uh, Aubrey's show is yeah. the Aubrey uh, one minute ish, right? And it ain't never a ish. minute, <laughs> but it's good. And it's just like, yo, she's been doing it for years now. And you just get up and you just do it. And that repetition and that doing something consistently has completely helped that sister out, you know, and she's loving it. You know, she gets a kick out of it. We get a kick out of it. So you don't have to, you don't have to like stress yourself out. If you're just starting and you're trying like, I just need to do this, make it five minutes on whatever you know how to talk about, you know, whatever you want it to be, yep. whether it's wood carving or stealing your grandmother's recipes or whatever, that's it. You can completely do that. Yeah. And don't, I, so, you know, George, George is saying that, uh, that he feels like a live broadcast is easier because he's been watching ours and they're relatable and, you know, they're, they're human. Honestly, like if I could go back and do it over again, um, and the advice that I would give everyone listening and watching right now is it's, it's actually really freeing when you're okay with the fact that no one is watching. Don't promote your first like five or six yeah. episodes, like whether you do them live or you're recording them and putting them up there, don't tell anyone, create the channel, start, 
practice. If you really hate them, delete them. Although I would say just keep them up. I, like the knowing that no one is necessarily going to show up, maybe it's just like a funder that you're going to be there to kind of sit in the shadows and watch is really freeing. You know, Paul mentioned something, and I, I want to remind watching, everybody. As, as I say that, I'm watching this go crazy. No, I, um, Paul mentioned something, and I, I swear I say this every time, and I swear people still do not connect to it. So I'm going to force people to do this pretty soon. You have to watch your one-hour local news or watch any sporting event. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is, golf, tennis, uh, whatever, horse racing, whatever, any sporting event where there is literally billions of dollars of equipment and watch them do a live broadcast, and there is never not a hiccup. Not ever. The Super Bowl mm -hmm. has done, like, yo, Danny popped a boob out, fam. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it, it. please stop. Like, if you watch any live production on TV today, your local news forward, there's always a minor hiccup. They'll be shuffling the papers and drop a paper on the floor. Or they'll talk to the weatherman and he'll be over here and he'll be like, hey, oh, yes, by the way, uh, we got this windstorm coming in today and it's going to blow Honolulu off the map. And then he'll go back, you know, to doing something. Like today, watch any live program that's more than an hour and it is never perfect. I worked in this production world. You should hear what's going on in our ears the whole time, you know. Like, so please stop thinking that because there is no perfect. And if you're really good uh, and I want to, I would challenge you. Um, we should actually do this one day for your, for your VHS club. Let's pull out the movie mistakes that are in movies and show a bunch of them <laughs> That'd be because fun, yeah. you have watched some stuff in the theater and have not realized that I am having the conniption fit and the meltdown and I'm holding this coffee in my left hand. And then all of a sudden, I have the stand-in cup in my hand because I actually stopped to drink, but I was just running a line, but it was perfect, and they said, keep it. And you didn't even realize I got the wrong cup or the wrong hat or my hair is out of position or glasses on, glasses off type of situation. Continuity yeah. mistakes are all over the place in multi-billion dollar film enterprises. It's so so true. just stop it. Um, you know what? I got to bring this up because it's funny to me. It was one of the first ones that I noticed, and then I went looking for them. Pee Wee Herman <laughs> just recently passed. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, rest in peace, uh, Paul. But there was a scene in the movie where he has his bike and he rolls up and he goes to pull the chain out. <laughs> He goes to pull the chain out of the panner on the side of the bike. And it's just mm -hmm. this endless chain that's coming and coming and coming and coming. Well, where you normally notice these is when these things got moved from the big screen to the VHS, the big screen mm -hmm. was 16 by nine, which we're all fully accustomed to now. But the VHS mm -hmm. back in the day was four by three. It was going to be cropped mm -hmm. in and something called pan and scan where they would move the camera around and just try to present to you the most relevant portion of that widescreen so it would fit on your TV, which is why on TNT, there used to be the thing, this film has been properly adapted in order to fit for TV. You know, that, that you exactly. saw that every everything, right? Well, what you noticed is on the side of the bike, there's a Home Depot bucket full of chain, <laughs> and there's actually a guy adding more chain to the bucket. So as Pee Wee is talking and pulling the chain, you can see yeah. the rim of the Home Depot bucket where he's actually pulling the chain out of. You know, and yep. that was one of the first ones that I ever noticed. And after that, I went looking for continuity mistakes. So just trust yeah. you, family. I, if we can't tell you nothing in this show, this show should be called Forget About Perfect. There ain't no damn such thing. <laughs> that should be the name <laughs> of this show. All right. Well, we're nearing the end, but I did want to cover one thing that I know comes up a lot. And this is um, this is for the existing audio only podcasters who are like trying to wrap their heads around how do I how do I now add in YouTube or how do I now add in video to my podcast? And what I will say, and I'm interested to hear Doc's opinion, but what I will say is start fresh. So how you, you have, whether you've had your podcast for two years or 15 years or whatever amount it is, it's audio only. Today, open up a YouTube channel, name it your podcast name, fill out all the descriptions about how amazing your podcast is, drop in your what you know, your website, your you know, your link on Captivate, whatever, wherever you know your podcast host is. Let everyone know where to listen to your podcast, where to catch past episodes, 
and your next episode, do it video first and then just go forward from there. So don't worry about your however many years of backlog that are audio only, totally fine. Those stay audio only, but from this day forward, add in video. If you are not at a point where you think you can do that consistently for whatever reason, no worries. Open the YouTube channel <laughs> and do a couple of special video events. So do like a, you know, you know, behind the scenes or a Q&A that, that's video only and start getting comfortable and build your channel out that way and then add in your video episodes when you're ready. But like, I, I would say, and George is making me laugh, this is coming from not one, but two Virgos sitting here. <laughs> That's so what I played. Just, just start. So don't, yeah. So don't worry about, you know, don't worry about trying to backtrack and trying to add all of that content in. You already have a platform. You already have all of your people. Let your people know you're adding in video. It's super exciting get started and just start from there and go forward. So don't, that's one of those cases where you don't need to worry about going back and editing, but you know, I, that anyway, that would be my, my advice now after hearing a bunch of people talk. And I think and Doc's I on have, the same page as me. I right? have to, I have to spoil something, George, cause George, George mentioned it. So it's funny to me cause I'm laughing cause George made that comment about being Virgos. Here's something that, um, Paul and Luis know, and maybe Aubrey, I'm just looking at who's all in the chat right now and rich uh rich knows there is nobody that plans harder than katie okay i would just tell you <laughs> kate katie was born with a freaking file of facts in her hand and when it became digital it turned into whatever that she uses now click up but there's nobody that plans harder than katie and it still goes sideways and it's yeah. not it's not from not planning because trust you me this lady is a consummate planner like if there was a planning olympics she would be gold medal <laughs> okay <laughs> but hey stuff happens you know and yep. so you really you just have to get <laughs> exactly right andy said you probably yeah. plan the whole vacation is <laughs> right like we're gonna i actually here. i andy you will laugh i did not because dane told me i could shut up <laughs> Uh, I'm, yeah, man. I did I'm, not. Oh, th hey, look. When I come there this week, I'm gonna go to your house yeah. and I'm gonna ask Dane. I'm like, Dane, listen. You can ask him. Did she really plan yeah. that? And he'd be like, No. Okay, I'll believe him because <laughs> I know you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. And, that, well, and that's what, that... but the cool thing is to know that, right? Yeah. No matter how much you plan, it can still go psycho. Just, just enjoy it, man. This the journey is so much fun, and I think a lot of people make it seem scary. Um, because everyone's so busy trying to, everyone's trying to be something, just be, look, just be all the other stuff is out the window. Stop your sentence at just be and do it, please. Just, just be doing it. it. <laughs> all right. And if you need help, like step-by-step step setting up a YouTube channel, or you just want someone there on the line with you, you can always find us in the Ecamm Live community. If you want to get, get over there, that is ecamm.tv slash community or on Discord, ecamm.tv slash Discord. I promise you there are people there, myself included, Doc included. We'd be more than happy to, to sit there and answer questions or you know jump jump on and say like, hey, you actually you need to fill out this field or, or answer how we're doing what we're doing. Um, we're happy to do a step-by-step. -step. With this episode, we just really wanted to let you know it, it's not that big a thing. It seems like a big thing. It's not that big a thing. Fill out the fields. You're not gonna screw it up if you do screw it up quote unquote it's fixable so go back and fix 100%. it it's, it's, it's all, all it's all good but it's all fixable but we um we are there to help all the way through all right doc we're gonna do we're gonna do final everything and then for our live people our live studio audience we're gonna do a fun celebration so if you missed it if you missed our fun celebration and our very cool giveaway it means that you need to hang out with us next time in the live studio audience. You can find us every Tuesday, 12 p.m. Eastern, here on YouTube to join the live studio audience. Um, and then you can participate in all of the fun stuff that we're about to do. Yes, and you can find the flow at flow.ecam.com. If you go to flow.ecam.com, it will allow you to subscribe to this podcast anywhere your podcast getting is got. And uh, yeah, if you like this so far, please jump on over and leave a review or better yet, uh, send someone else who needs to hear this and a quick reminder and thank you to our sponsor this episode is brought to you by Descript Descript is the secret 
Trump's freaking weapon. Okay, I was going to insert some more rich bad words here. <laughs> but, but you know what? If you had the script, <laughs> you can just highlight them and delete them, and no one would even know that Doc was about to say um, some fruity language because the script basically allows you to edit your podcast the same way you would edit a Word document. You'll highlight the parts that you like and delete the parts that you don't, and it will automatically chop your audio slash video and allow you to basically sitting out your podcast from there you have all of the tools that are available to you like any regular uh, audio editor but it's just simpler because if you know how to edit a word document you're good to go and you know what they just added a whole bunch of cool ai features that are totally worth checking out so go over and check out descript is at descript.com and yeah you can say descript but i'm always call it descript because it sounds french <laughs> 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 that, my friends, is called a live read. That's just how you do them. <laughs> That's how you do them. I absolutely love it. Well, happy flow anniversary! Thank you so much for all being flow riders. Yeah, I can't believe we did Stick it. Stick around if you're in the live studio audience. And if you are listening, we appreciate you. And we'll see you next week. Flow riders out. All right, Q&A Bye, people. Everyone. Let's do this. Like that's that was that in that lieu of a Q and A today. We're gonna do. Oh, yes, right. We're doing ducks. A duck race. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing ducks. So we've been we've What's been up, collecting Al? everyone's everyone's names. If you've left a comment, we have all of your names collected, and we're gonna add you all to a duck race. We're gonna compete for three prizes, um, three twenty five dollar gift cards to our merch shop. So if you haven't yet put a comment in, but you're hiding here in the live chat, throw a comment in so we can grab your name. Uh, and we will start in five seconds here. As soon as we have Luis tells us that all of the names are <laughs> in the right here in the background. I just figured I out. Just I, I shouldn't say this. Doc just realized. All what? right, great. So well, let's, I'll say really quickly. Doc just realized that there is actually a human race and a robot race. So next time we'll have to switch it up. But today we're, we're going <laughs> to stay with ducks. I was uh I was just ready to comment. I was just thinking, George, like if you want to create all your stuff and you don't want to do it by yourself, all you can do is pop up in the Discord and go in the family room and invite a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Tell them that hey guys, on Thursday at you know X o'clock, I'm going to create all of my stuff. So can you guys come and hang out with me in the Discord and make sure I don't trip on my face? And somebody will show up. It's not that hard. It's very true. All right, are we ready? Here come the ducks. Everyone ready? So we're going to do this three times, three winners. If you win, you need just to email us at marketing at ecamm.com and we will get you your gift card. Good luck, ducks. I'm looking at Matt's ducks afro. Already yawning. <laughs> no, no, I'm looking at Matt's ducks afro. It's super funny. <laughs> oh, too funny. All right, here we go. We're we ready, Luis? Hit, hit those ducks. Zoom catcher still thinks it's Christmas. Oh, why is Valerie in the front? Boo. <laughs> like, I don't know. Usually Johnny... the one that, that starts the lead at the beginning is normally not the one that wins. It's, it's deceiving. Right. Well, yeah, here's Johnny, what's funny Johnny's about, making a comeback. About Val is that she has the green mohawk and the yellow duck, and that's almost like her um her character. Oh, wait, Martin is coming out of the woodworkings. <laughs> Dan had one right. of these illegal cups of coffee. He's been doping. Oh my God, Dan has oh, been doping. Oh, Tom Oscar. Morris. Tom. Oh, Tom. No, Tom's coming. He's making a break. Oh. oh no. Oh, Dan, the coffee's wearing out. Dan. <laughs> okay. Dan, the coffee's okay. wearing out. Here comes oh, Andy. Andy. Andy's making a break. There you go. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, it's so deceiving. Oh wait. Mario's coming. Tom is back. Tom is back. Tom got that Tom coffee. Tom is back. Tom is Tom back. Is back. Tom Tom is back. <laughs> It's an app, Ken. And I think we totally think that the uh, Code and Circuit Kids should create an Ecamm version for us next time. All right, congratulations, Tom. Email Wait, us important, at marketing important, at ecamm.com. Important technical announcement. Yes, please send this to marketingecamm.com. Important technical announcement. Ken, can you pick up some half and half? I'll be there in two days. <laughs> We've got you. we got you. All right, two more times. We had to make sure that we also have in... Gretchen and who else came late that I said Gretchen and yeah, just give me a minute. It? I'm adding and Alicia. those names. Yeah. Um, All right. Thank Tom, you. that duck holy Congrats, looked Tom. like you, by the way, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too funny. Yeah. I know Gretchen is from duck count. Yeah. Duck country. She's, she's ready. We should have a little Oregon duck. <laughs> 
Oh my God. It's so funny. That was just way too good. Um, hey Tom, you know what? There's been a bunch of people. I know you have your your Nintendos, but there's been some people that have been having some uh trying to figure out how to connect the PlayStation 5 proper to Ecamm. Do you have one of those? If so, uh we should get together and make a video to show people how to connect their game. I know we still I keep it's it's my it's been my Tom and I have been meaning to do like a Mario Kart Ecamm um live stream and I I have not yet gotten there, but Maybe oh, hey, I'll Doc, set maybe your thing up when I, we could do it. Yeah, I'll set your little yeah. box up that we got because we got a new type of capture card for Katie. Because yeah. I'm, I'm all in on capture cards that have their own dedicated power supply now because the other ones seem to be having a problem with the new machines. And so yeah, it would be a good test. Check it out. I was I haven't thought. Oh, hey, I'm gonna call Ken and be like, Hey, Are Ken, can I buy a PlayStation Five so that I can learn how to set this up? And he can be like, No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Tom uh, has one. All right, here we're ready for round see, two. Yeah, Good we'll luck, do ducks. That. All right, here we go. More ducks. Good. More ducks. Hey, how come there's no red ducks see, in this race? It's deceiving because it's the first one is never the one that actually wins. It's like yeah, I, I caught on to this game. <laughs> Wait, why does uh -oh, Andy, Andy have don't a make a break right now? Oh, it's a spoon. He's a chef. Okay, Andy's, I was like, why does Andy think, have a paddle? Is it a spoon? Yeah, it's a spoon. Oh. And the chef hat. Oh, Spotsy uh -oh. has got that. Albert, the, Albert is the popping out. Equipment. Val, look, <laughs> hey, Maury's there. He's looks like Maury now. He, he just actually got, got a little suit. He needs a guitar. Yo, AT <laughs> is all the way in the back back there, girl. What are you doing? Come on, AT. Yo, she has dreads oh, though. Goodness. It's Steven. It's, like, it's Steven for the breakaway. Nah, Steven's going to trip right now. Here you go. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, cool. Hey, Ken, we're, we're doing ducks, man. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here comes Johnny. Here comes Ooh, Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> I love it. That one, that one, that like so. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait. I got to I got to Tom, this is for you. Okay, Ray, I'm going to do this. The... Congratulations, Johnny. All right, where this is the last round. And again, we are competing for a $25 gift certificate to the Ecamm merch site. If you if you are a winner, I'm like looking up eagerly at the ducks. If you are a winner, email us at marketing at ecamm.com. Gretchen, Gretchen said my yeah, duck Gretchen's got distracted, duck is distracted for a minute. Gretchen, it's not just uh, your duck, girl, it's you too. <laughs> <laughs> Gretchen's duck's coming for you, Doc. She's coming for you. <laughs> Oh, there, the Yo. red one's back. It is, Faith News Media right, is the go. red one this time. There you go. Oh, I like the little. I like costumes. the little one at the bottom. Oh, it's Maury. Oh, Maury's um, duck is like. Yeah, that's the one. Like Maury had the duck duck. with the. Yeah, with the suit and the glasses. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh, yeah. it's Doctor oh, Duck. I'm all about it, George. Come on, uh -oh. Doc Duck in the building. Uh oh, come on, George. Come Zoom on, George. Oh, Kimberly's coming making through with a naked duck. James Hatcher's coming through with a naked duck. Oh, P with the Queen. Uh oh, it's Queen P. <laughs> Queen or King Duck? Religious Aubrey duck. is coming. No, Aubrey Aubrey is coming. royalty duck. Royalty duck. Oh, Aubrey oh, is oh. coming. Oh, Look, AT is has... sliding in oh, the back. Aubrey. Oh, she looks like a reindeer. <laughs> I thought it was dreads. Oh no! Oh, here's uh -oh. oh here switches here's up, Lisa. switching up. Boom! Switching George, up. it's gonna be George. It's George. George. Boom. <laughs> Oh, that's totally you know, appropriate. George I loved this I idea, apropos. so he wins this one. Yeah, George started apropos. this episode, and so bad. And so, uh, yeah, congratulations to James, who finally decided to launch his thing. So, James, you get to talk to George about how to like congratulations, stop and James. <laughs> Congratulations, George, for winning. Thank you, everyone, for being on this ride with us over the last year. We are just so incredibly appreciative. <laughs> and since you're all hanging out here, it's worth noting um, that Doc is going to be here in the Ecamm studio Thursday on for a week. So we'll be doing some fun behind the scenes and some yeah, cool stuff. Demo uh, Friday we'll is going to be up. live from the Ecamm headquarters. Um, actually, mm -hmm. uh, what I thought about doing for Friday, so if you guys want to come through, is maybe on Friday, instead of our traditional demo demo, I'll be like ripping all the lights out and putting it back so that you guys can yeah, see. Yeah, that'll be cool. Did. Um, yeah. So if you can, and I'll, re I'll remember you when I get there, bring your um, Insta360 flow 
because we're going to have to connect that yeah. via uh ndi because i'm gonna you know be moving around so oh, yeah. you gotta chase me with the yeah. camera and try not to make people oh beat. yeah that'll be fun <laughs> that'll be I like fun it. I like it. <laughs> yes. And also, it's not, congratulations it's to Gretchen. Gretchen launched her podcast also. And so, congratulations, um, Gretchen. I, I don't have the link on my face right now, but Paul might. And so, check out Gretchen's new podcast. So, Gretchen and James just launched new podcasts. Is, is, is that what's the plural of podcasts? Uh, congratulations. Podcasts. <laughs> podcast is, is, is. I actually, this, oh this tea start does not work we need coffee start who the hell said drink some tea in the morning that's just as good needs no, a punch no, everyone room. needs a coffee Never mind. yeah <laughs> i need one oh of those dan 24 ounce coffees <laughs> yeah you need yeah the dan so contest winners you can you can use your money to buy the dan <laughs> it Dude, is just, it's the is, size of my head look at this that this mug is, is crazy my whole head is hidden behind it Jackie! Oh gosh! Hey, All listen. right. Well, onwards Wait, I, I to the next thing on my list. But Jackie, yes. um, please, please um, send us an email, marketingecam.com, so we can have you come on to the flow and sort of recover some of the stuff we did during Leap into podcasting yeah. because it's been how many months? Like a lot. I forgot. It's been many. a live selling. Yes. Yeah, leaving a live selling. That's what I said. Um, yeah. So yeah. yeah that's what so, you said. <laughs> please, please send us an email. We're going to bring you on as a guest, and then we're going to talk about all the things, Jackie. All right, cool. Yeah, definitely. She just got volunteered. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye.